identify yourself your address. Sure. Mind if I sit down? My name is Jerry Jackson, 580 Canberra Drive, Lowell, Oregon. And um, my uh, reason for speaking today is I'm in opposition of the plan from the beginning. Um, I have what I'd like to submit is the public comment that I made to the after they registered on the federal registry. And I'd like to say that not only what I'd like to see is end with the progress that they're making right now, but just the end of the plan altogether. And my reasoning is in the writing, but I'd like to say it's based on financial uh, needs in the future for the county. You know, we don't need to be taking on federal responsibilities. And uh, and being a former city councilor and a <coughs> chair of the Plymouth Budget Committee, I frown on uh, further implementation of this into our city. I mean, that's just based on as a citizen. So uh, again, I'd just like to see this thing be put away and, and no more money be spent on it. That's all I have. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jackson, did you, did you give um, Kevin a copy of that? I will. Perfect. Otherwise, we'll next time. Yeah, I understand. I, I can't pick up that unless it's fine. I'm sorry. Okay, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, Michael Farthing. <clears throat> I'm an attorney, but I think I'm a citizen also. I wasn't used to the introduction, but uh, I'm both. <clears throat> I'm here on behalf of Al Leahy. He's a property owner in uh, inside the Urban Growth Foundry for the City of Paloma, outside the city limits. <clears throat> I have submitted uh, letters previously. I submitted a letter yesterday that uh, Mr. Barrett has, and uh, he can give to you. First, I want to thank, uh, this is my first venture into Benton County. I'm a Lane County uh, person. Uh, I'm from Eugene. And um, in particular, Mr. Barrett and Mr. Crony have been very helpful uh, in guiding me through your local processes. Uh, they're different from Lane County, but each county is different. Um, again, I'm here for uh, Mr. Leahy and Oregon Sequoia LLC, which is a prop the actual property owner. Uh, we were opposed to the uh, proposed action to adopt uh, implementing ordinances for the HCP. Our primary basis for opposing, uh, and I think Mr. Barrett may have talked to you previously, is that that HCP was not adopted in accordance with statewide land use uh, law, and specifically the what are called the post acknowledgement plan amendment procedures which are set forth in ORS 197, 610 to 625. Um, we believe, and I, I believe uh, the staff would agree, that the HCP is a land use plan, and all, uh, it's a refinement of your comprehensive plan. And, and you can just look at the proposed findings here, and, and that supports our uh, assertion to that effect. Uh, I'm looking at Exhibit 1, page one, the uh, finding, the Board of Commissioners initiated this text amendment by approving the HCP in which the county obligates itself to amend the development code to implement the HCP. So these are implementation measures for a comprehensive plan, refine, a refinement of a comprehensive plan. I've talked to Ed Moore of the DLCD, who's the Southern Alignment representative. Um, Mr. Leahy has talked to Bob Rindy of DLCD. I believe they're in agreement with that position that the county needs to start over with the HCP and adopt it in accordance with statewide land use laws. I believe the county was looking at U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and, and that it was a federally, uh, it was a federal program um, and it's new. Uh, Mr. Brett uh, mentioned that this is a new program. It's very ambitious, I have to say. Um, we're not doing anything like this in Lane County, and I applaud you for, for trying to mitigate the impacts on private owners. Uh, in my mind, it's somewhat analogous to what we have in Eugene, which is a West Eugene Wetlands Mitigation Bank, where you can buy into, uh, you can disturb your wetlands, but 
by buying into it. So it's similar to that, and I understand the, the rationale behind it. That's your policy decision. It's just that we believe you have to go through the statewide land use uh, structure to, to implement that, uh, to adopt the HCP and then adopt implementing ordinances. I'm not going to go, uh, given uh, Mr. Barrett's recommendation to you, I'm not going to go into a lot of uh, details on this. Um, I think there are some issues regarding the coverage of the HCP itself, and, and we can get into that when it comes back around, uh, after, hopefully after you've started over. But I think there's an issue of which property should it apply to. And I believe areas in, where Mr. Lady's property is uh, particularly troublesome because his property is inside the urban growth boundary. It is urban or urbanizable land, depending on the definition. It's not rural land, and it creates some real issues for you, for the county, because of the requirement that plans in that area be coordinated between the two jurisdictions. And you might make it much easier on yourself and the county if the HCP in the future was limited to areas outside of acknowledged urban growth boundaries. And that's just kind of a gratuitous suggestion on that. Uh, I had some other issues dealing with um, Major 56 notices, uh, ORS 215, 503, lawyer stuff, but things that are very important. Um, one thing you might, might think about when you go back over this process is, are there any Major 49 issues? And that is for <coughs> In other words, are people's properties being restricted and the fair market value diminished by this program? I don't have a call on that. I, it's just something that I would be aware of, and certainly I will look at if you choose to continue to apply this to Mr. Uh, Lady's property. Um, also, there is a provision in the existing implementing ordinance that establishes a July 09 date for partitions and subdivisions. I would look very closely at that because there is a uh, ORS 215.110 sub 6 talks about you shall not enact retroactive ordinances. Um, uh, I, that's something that we would look at if we were to appeal uh, this matter. <clears throat> One thing that uh, I know a lot of work has gone into the HCP. It's a very nice document. It's very well done. It's uh, it's very comprehensive. Um, we're not doing that in Lane County. Uh, I don't know why. It could be financial. It could be impetus. It could be a number of things. Uh, what we would do in Lane County in this kind of thing is if somebody came in to disturb a rural piece of property, put a home, whatever, uh, a referral would go out to U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and they would either say, yes, it's potential habitat, or no, it isn't. And then if it is potential habitat, then it would be up to the individual landowner to address that as part of the permitting process. That's one possible way and that sounds like what you're doing now. I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not that familiar with Benton County processes, but that, that is uh, also, it's similar to how you would deal with wetlands, uh, regulated wetlands. Uh, is there a wetland there? If so, DSL gets a notice and Corps, Army Corps of Engineers gets a notice. I, I'm gonna cut short uh, because I don't wanna get into a lot of other things. It sounds like uh, we are in agreement with your staff. Uh, we would like to see the HCP started over again, that you not take any action with regard to either 0241 or 0242 uh, until you get your HCP in place and acknowledged, meaning refer uh, referral to DLCD and um, just the, the statutory land use process. I'm happy to answer any questions. Just, just a comment. Um, thank you, Mr. Brogan, for, for your comments. Uh, to, just to give you a little bit more information, in fact, there were uh, um, many members from the agencies that you you uh, you mentioned in the process, and um, why Benton County was, was, was taking the lead on it. It is the very last remaining remnants of, of upland prairie habitat for the Fenwick's blue butterflies. So there was some very specific uh, goals in mind. 
but uh, there has been those conversations with those state agencies and all, and it is a, it's a new adventure, yeah. so to speak. Welcome to land. <laughs> yeah. I actually have a question. So in Lane County, when um, somebody wants to build, and using wetlands as an example, so uh, the county says, or the city says, there are potential wetlands here, and then the landowner has to pay somebody to come in and evaluate it. Correct, correct. Unless you're in West Eugene, and then, or if inside the metro area, and then there is this West Eugene Wetlands Bank, which right, is a very right, specific right. program. But otherwise, um, if you want to uh, fill a wetland, you're going to have to justify that it's either not a wetland or you have the reason to do that. Right, and so that's what people in the HCP will have to do if their land hasn't already been evaluated. They'll have to. What the county <coughs> process was to make it simpler. Yeah, but I, I yeah. understand. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. Best intentions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.